Hey, I'm Gabby, and I'm a chicken farmer out of North Georgia who likes to make videos explaining all the work I do on my family's farm. And today's video is about cleaning out chicken houses. So for every chicken farmer, at the end of the flock, we have to A, get rid of all the chicken litter that accumulated inside of the house, and B, repair any damage that was done while the flock was there. So this video covers cleaning out and repairing my chicken house. But remember that there are multiple types of chicken farms, not just one. And so this video covers my kind of chicken house, which is a breeder chicken farm. If you're curious about the different types of chicken farms that are out there, I have a video on that already, and you can click on this gray card somewhere up here. And in that video, I covered the four big types of chicken farms. There are even more, but this video will give you a good understanding about the four basic most common types of chicken farms. Anyways, let me start from the very beginning of the process, which is when the flock actually leaves the farm. So for my kind of chicken farm, a breeder chicken farm, the hens are taken in the middle of the night. But all throughout the day beforehand, semi-trucks will come to the farm and park themselves wherever. When it gets closer to night, a crew of guys will come, generally less than seven, and they will prepare the front of the chicken house for loading up all the chickens. So once it becomes dark, they will grab a bunch of nets and they will push as much of the flock as they can to the front of the chicken house. Once they've formed a large enough group in the front, they'll turn off the lights and they will take the chickens and load them onto the semi-truck that is parked in front. Once they load up that semi-truck, another one will take its place and they will continue this process of turning on the lights, pushing all the chickens to the front, turning off the lights, and then loading on the truck. And they will repeat this process all throughout the night until they've loaded up all 10,000 chickens. So generally, by the end of the night, it's gonna take them four to six hours, and they would have loaded up four to six semi-trucks. Now that all the chickens are gone, the first big job to do inside the chicken house is to move all the slats inside. The slats are these wooden platforms that the chickens will eat, drink, and lay their eggs on for the 10 months that we have them. And so by the end of the 10 months, underneath the slats, there will be tons and tons of chicken litter. So moving the slats is a four step process. And step one is moving one side of the slats onto the other. Step one usually takes about an hour and we will move 123 slats by hand. But once step one is complete, heavy equipment can come in and scoop up all the chicken litter. Now, sometimes chicken farmers will, themselves will bring in their own heavy equipment and they will gather up all the chicken litter and spread it themselves. But in our case, we hired a professional cleanout crew who brings their own heavy equipment and they will remove all the chicken litter and spread it all around to whoever buys the chicken litter. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of them removing the chicken litter, but I can still show you the process of cleaning out a chicken house. A bobcat will be the first scooper of the chicken litter, and they will primarily hang out on the sides of the chicken house. They're gonna push all the chicken litter to the middle of the chicken house, where then a telehandler will scoop up that chicken litter and then drive backwards to the front. At the front of the chicken house, the telehandler is gonna load up spreader trucks who are then gonna carry it to the farmer who bought the load. In this clip, I'm driving the Bobcat after the cleanup crew had finished, and I'm cleaning up any residual chicken litter. So the next day after the cleaning crew had finished cleaning the right side of the chicken house, we went into steps two and three of moving the slats. Step two is moving the right side slats back to the right side, and step three is moving the left side slats on top of the right side. Generally, steps two and three are done on the same day. So as soon as we get done with step two, we're moving right into step three. So that means in about two hours, we're gonna move 246 slats, and each slat weighs about 175 pounds. So in about two hours, we're moving 43,000 pounds of wood by hand, which is just a pretty good workout. So. To move slats, there's generally a crew of people who are the primary slat movers, and behind them, there's gonna be another crew of people who are 
taking the slat bottoms and the slat fronts and then placing them on top. So once steps two and three are finished, now the cleanout crew can come back and clean out the left side of the chicken house. Once the chicken litter has been removed, step four can now take place, which is moving the left side slats back to the left side. So at this point, the chicken house is ready to be repaired. All the chicken litter has been removed and all the slats are placed back to their original positions. But before I go into all the different repair jobs that we did this year, I'm gonna compare my chicken house to newer chicken houses. Um, my chicken house was built in 1977 and we have posts every 12 feet to support the roof. Most modern chicken houses, however, don't use that kind of design and they use something called a clear span design, which means they don't have posts every 12 feet. A fellow chicken farmer of mine, a breeder farmer, sent me this footage of him moving his slats and you can see that his chicken house doesn't have posts like mine. So he can use a bobcat to pick up his slats and move them to the other side. Note that his slats are 12 feet wide, whereas my slats are four feet wide. So moving slats in a newer chicken house is a lot easier and faster than an older chicken house like mine. But anyways, thank you Hayes for sending me that footage. Now that all the chicken litter has been removed and all the slats have been returned to their original positions, we could then start to repair the chicken house. Generally, the first part of the chicken house that we start to repair are the slats. Now the term slats refers to not only the large wooden platforms we were moving earlier in the video, but also the sticks that make them up. These sticks are three quarters of an inch thick by four feet long. So first, we replace the individual slats, and then if we see any whole slats that are broken or, or sagging down, we will build new slats to replace them. In this clip, I am building a whole new slat using hammer and nails, and that'll take me about an hour. And I was using hammer and nails in this clip because my father was elsewhere in the chicken house building another slat with the pneumatic air gun. With the air gun, I can build a slat in 15, 20 minutes. Another part of the chicken house that we repaired is the front right curtain. Curtains in chicken houses are safety mechanisms designed to prevent chickens from overheating during the summer should any other piece of equipment fail. So when it gets too hot in the chicken house, the curtains will drop down and allow outside air to come in. But we were replacing the front right curtain because it had too many holes in it. And when the curtain has too many holes in it, too much of the outside air comes in while normally the AC system is designed to keep the chickens cool. So I have a video actually going over the chicken house's AC system. You can click on this gray card up here to watch more about that. Also this year we replaced the rooster feeder bin that is located on the outside of the chicken house. Uh, the, the old rooster feeder bin had become rusty and full of holes. We, we conducted a lot of repair jobs on the farm this year, but unfortunately I didn't record any of it. <laughs> we replaced a lot of the drinking water lines and the chicken feeder lines. Uh, both of these jobs are actually pretty difficult and pretty complex. We also repaired a lot of the chicken nests, so we replaced the chicken nest bottoms, the side panels, and we replaced the egg belts for the entire right side. Uh, the right side of the chicken house has two egg belts, each are a thousand feet long, and we have to install those through the nests. That is a pretty difficult job. And for the, for the egg nests, we did those repair jobs while the egg nests were floating up in the air, which is a lot easier. Uh, so, I mean, the jobs, the jobs are difficult, but when, when all these systems are hanging up in the air, it makes it a lot easier than the alternative when they're all on the ground and they're being used by the chickens. This year we were given two months to clean out the chicken house, which is a very long amount of time. The chickens left on September 30th, 2018, came back December 11th, 2018. Last year they only gave us two weeks, which is a very short turnaround, very difficult. 
But typically when you're cleaning out and repairing a chicken house, the hardest part is repairing the chicken house because you could be repairing anything from the chicken house itself to installing new equipment to repairing old equipment. And I, I find that a lot more difficult than moving slats and cleaning out chicken litter. Also during the clean out and repair process, we have something called the annual mouse hunt where we go around and kill hundreds of mice with poison and BB guns. I have a video on that right here and you can learn more about that the whole thing <laughs> in this link. But also in that video, I go over my quest to find the perfect chicken farmer's BB gun for killing mice. But anyways, that's, that's how you clean out a chicken house, a breeder chicken house. This only applies to breeder chicken houses. There are many different types of chicken farms. They have different clean out and repair processes that they have to go through. But anyways, thank you for watching.